in my never-ending quest to sift through all the garbage released on streaming services exclusively and tell you which ones are worth watching and which to avoid like the plague, I'm back again with a brand new film called Time Cut. Oh, sounds totally killer. As in, it sounds like the plot of Totally Killer because a young woman goes back in time to stop a murderer. It's the same premise, but is it delivered better? No, it's not. This movie sucks ass. Let's talk about it. Time Cut is an easy breezy hour and a half. It's rated, I don't know, uh, feels like it's rated G because there's almost no violence, there's no gore, there's no swearing. This is like the kids bop equivalent of a slasher film. I'm gonna talk about some of the surface level stuff that annoy me and then I will go into spoilers as this review goes on. And I'll let you know ahead of time because this movie's terrible, folks. It really is bad and I don't have any problem saying that because good movies are still coming out all the time, just not on these streaming services really. And so we don't have to be nice and spare feelings, okay? People got paid money to make these. These streaming platforms make a ton of revenue and they're constantly increasing their prices. There are so many of them now and it's hard for people to justify the expense and what to watch, where, when, why, how, who cares? This is my job now, to be the garbage man and go around roaming these apps trying to find anything that's new for you to watch. Hey, if you find yourself enjoying the Bitch Fest, maybe think about hitting the subscribe and the notification bell so these show up in your feed. It's free of charge. It costs you nothing. Let's talk about the premise very quickly. The film starts out in 2003. A young woman is killed at a party at a barn in Minnesota. Now, if you don't know, if you can't tell from my beautiful accent, I actually was born and raised in Minnesota. Sure can't wait to see all the references and the fun things they do with the setting. They do nothing with the setting. And no one even has a fucking Minnesota accent. It's just weird across the board. But what this small town of Sweetly does have is a not so Sweetly killer who has now murdered four people, who has a reputation for killing young teenagers. After this not horrific, not violent, not scary opening premise, we jump forward in time to 2024. They point out several times that it's 20 years later when in fact, if I do the math, it's 21 years later, but who cares? This movie sucks ass across the board. First off, visually, oh my God, they didn't do any color grading at all. The footage looks like it was taken straight off an iPhone and then they didn't do anything with it. No tweaking, no enhancements, no play of the contrast. I actually went into my TV settings several times to make sure that it wasn't the TV's fault. My wife pulled it up on her phone and she confirmed, no, this is just a flat, dull, fugly looking movie. And that goes for the acting as well, which will take me to the rest of the premise. So we get the death at the beginning. We fast forward 21 years. And here we are with her sister. Her name is Lucy, or as I call her, Budget MJ from Spider-Man Homecoming, because this actress at times is really given off a budget Zendaya vibe. Lucy's really bummed out about the loss of her sister still. Not, not because she liked her, she didn't even know her, but her parents are like shells of their former selves. And that makes Lucy sad because she's raised in an environment that is not catering to her selfish needs. And yes, she is very selfish and awful. And we're gonna find that out later in the story, but not intentionally so. Like her character isn't written to be hateable, but it's coming off that way. Anyway, back to the stupid plot. Lucy and her terribly aged up parents go to mourn the sister on the day of her death back at that barn on that faithful night. But Lucy, like all teenagers, gets distracted when she sees some flashing lights. So she walks over to the barn and sees these cheap looking black boxes, which are actually a time machine. Whoa! The lasers start going off like it's a rave. And after a bare bone effect, next thing she knows, it's 2003 all over again. And the reason I really know this is because we got some Avril Lavigne busting out of the jukebox. And this is legitimately the only praise I'm gonna give to this film. It's got a banger of a soundtrack. When I hear a Hillary Duff song bust out of nowhere, yeah, I'm all in for that moment. When I get H. Duff playing, you better believe I start moving with it. Let's go back, 
Back to the beginning. Let the rain fall down. <laughs> but there are bangers throughout this movie, so I'll give it props for the soundtrack. And nothing else. So she's back in the past, barely has any sort of reaction to this news. She's just kind of like, wait, what? It's 2003? Okay, that's kind of weird and crazy, but let's just start doing stuff. Uh, like, just, nobody reacts in normal ways in this film. Also, when you're gonna do a time travel movie, it's typically good to set up the town, the people, give everything some life and some personality so that when we jump back 20 years or whatever it is, that you can see the big changes and you can be like, oh my God, remember this? Remember that from before and back to the future? They do like a tiny smidgen of it, not enough. Also, since I very much still remember the early 2000s, the clothing is pretty on point, but they go to the mall, and this might be anecdotal evidence, but we find out one of the teens works at the video store. Apparently there's a video rental store inside of the mall, which I've never seen in my entire life, and seen as I'm from Minnesota and have been to a lot of malls there, I'm gonna call bullshit. I've never seen a video rental store in a mall before. But that's just a small, tiny little thing. God, there's so much to say. You know what, we're gonna go into kind of like spoiler shit now. All right, we're going to, this movie sucks. That's the bottom line. Let's get into it. So Lucy travels back in time. She walks across the bridge to this town. She sees that a restaurant's open that was previously closed. She goes to her school where she talks to the science teacher who was at the beginning of the movie, now younger, and there's a dumb turtle there that she saw from before. He never shows up again. He has these two scenes. They're completely useless. I'm pretty sure the only point is to say, hey, that turtle should have a better tank. That, that's it. She gave the turtle a better life in the future. That's the only reason this exists. The school is also gonna be where she bumps into a boy named Quinn. She's gonna befriend him very quickly. He tells her about time travel and how it's not a good idea. And she quickly convinces him with her iPhone that it in fact is real. So now I'm going back to my video rental store rant. Quinn just finds out that a person has come from the future. He has learned about this insane technology, this device that contains the internet, music, movies, all right in the palm of your hand. And he decides in his infinite wisdom to head to work at his $6 an hour job at the video rental store that's in a mall. Like, hey, I'm gonna let you finish, but ugh, gotta, <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get that shift done. You know, this is, this is insanely important information, something that's once in a lifetime, but uh, yeah, bye, I'm gonna go to work. Are you out of your fucking mind with this script? But that's okay, this gives her some time to meet her sister. She's gonna befriend her sister, get to know her a little bit in case she decides she wants to save her at some point. <laughs> I shit you not, this is a plot point of the film. Later on, she's gonna have to make the choice whether or not to save her sister based on her own selfish needs, but I'm gonna get to that, I'm gonna get there. We have so much to cover. And like with all of these reviews that end up turning into bitch fests, I'm gonna be all over the board. You're just gonna have to keep up. You're gonna have to stay with me on it. We have learned that Lucy broke up with her boyfriend who is a suspected murderer. He's always been the suspect, but uh, we don't really go anywhere with that storyline at all. He's just in the background looming. He's a red herring, I guess. Because she's actually in love with another. And since this is a Netflix movie in 2024, you better believe it's a girl. So brave. It's perfect. And because these movies do get solid funding for showing representation like this, they are of course gonna dedicate a scene where they sit at a diner and talk about how 2024 has gotten much better, gay marriage is legal, things are going to be more comfortable. Doesn't feel forced in the movie at all. It is just so eye-rollingly stupidly presented. But everything is in this movie because these aren't really movies. They're just shitty things that get thrown out so that they can pad their collection on their streaming service 
They can trick people into watching them by a somewhat interesting trailer or premise. And then they can throw in their obvious advertisement. They can plug whatever movement they need to so they can get funding for it, so they can make this crap movie. And we can just repeat this miserable process all over again. And speaking of advertising, the one in this is fucking hilarious. While Lucy and Quinn are in his little laboratory hangar that he has, at one point she's hungry and notices his butterfinger and she's gonna try to lay her finger on it and he's like, no, nobody lays a finger on my butterfinger. And the camera perfectly frames up like eight butterfingers all stacked with the logos prominently showing. So stupid. And I thought to myself, wow, Quinn really likes Butterfinger. I'm sure this is going to be like a fun ongoing thing. Now, it's just the one, the one scene. Never again brought up. Awesome. We have also established in this movie that Quinn and Lucy are very good at uh, science. They're just good at science. Uh, so therefore, they're able to figure out how this time machine works, operates. They can read through all the coding, the language. And they realize they need to get their hands on this, this vial that goes in of dark matter or something. I can't remember. Who cares? Thankfully, Lucy's father happens to work at the company where they can obtain more of this, which is another reason why she needs to get close to her sister, because then she can steal the badge. She can get in there, get the liquid that they need to fire up that bad boy, and boom, she's back home. But before she goes, perhaps she can stop this murder in his or her tracks. It's, it's a guy. It's, of course, it's a guy. Now, I was confused a few times during this movie. First, I thought, all right, either this movie is really poorly written or there are two villains or more. Because there are several moments where the villain warps from one location to another with zero explanation. The first of really only two action scenes, if you want to call them that, is at the mall, where Lucy knows two murders are going to take place. Friends of Summers are going to die here. During this scene, they're in a store that doesn't look like any store I've ever seen in 2003, but whatever, who cares? The villain's there. Keep in mind, he has no weapon. He finds random things to use, like a broken CD or the escalator itself. They're in the store. They manage to run away from him. He's behind them, upstairs in the store. They go down the escalator and, oh, peekaboo, guess who's at the bottom? Somehow the killer. He somehow got from in the store flew over their heads and plopped down below. Or I guess he moved a statue from Adam West's Batman, which revealed some open area that he could go down a pole and end up, but it doesn't make any sense. But there's not two killers, there's one. In another scene, they're on a boat, he's over on one side by the door, they run away from him and oh, there he is again. How, how, this fucking guy doesn't even run. He slow walks everywhere because that's more scary and ominous. This movie has no scares. It has no thrills. It has nothing at all. They cut away from the three or four kills that are in the movie. I'm gonna stab you. And then it shows a reaction shot. And then maybe you see a knife or whatever impaled in the person. It's, it's so pathetic. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never traveled through time. However, if I were to end up on the location on the day of all these murders, I know how they're gonna happen, where they're gonna happen, when they're gonna happen, because I grew up in an environment where I was constantly reminded of it, I probably would just get a gun and shoot the guy. Or I tell the authorities where it's gonna happen, try to convince them, or I would set a trap. Or there are so many scenarios where she could have succeeded, but instead she just like blindly, stupidly stumbles into these places. I think it's time to skip ahead to the final crescendo of this movie. She finally tells her sister Summer that they're related. Summer naturally doesn't believe this at first until Lucy busts out a letter that Summer wrote. A letter, by the way, that Lucy found mere days ago in a loose floorboard in her room. How her parents or her didn't find this 20 years prior is beyond me, but everything about this movie is beyond stupid, so let's keep going. With this newfound knowledge that Summer is going to die unless they do something about it, they have concocted a plan so idiotic, so masterfully fucking dumb, that I think my 12-year-old son could do a better job just rattling ideas off. Summer's gonna go to the barn party as planned. Why? I don't know. She just is. While Lucy and Quinn, who is obviously the killer, and it was obvious from pretty much the first time they meet, are gonna go break into this, uh, 
facility and get whatever mutagen shit they need to get home. Oh my god. So when they go into this uh, compound, they find out that it's already been ransacked. One of the vials has been taken. Why the killer didn't take all three of them, who, who knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. They're still able to get one of the other ones, which is nice. That's convenient. While this is happening, we're cutting back and forth to Summer at the party. And this is a big, bold move. She goes up to the girl she likes and she plants a powerful kiss right on those lips in front of all of her classmates. How the hell are people going to react in 2003? When movies like American Pie were popular and lesbians making out was fucking hot. Well, naturally, they're not going to react at all because this movie was written in 2024 by someone who knows nothing about 2003, apparently. So yeah, no reaction at all. This is a party where young adults are drinking. If guys spotted this happening, they'd be like, Woo! Yeah! Take off your top! Just like bro douchebags. But no, nothing happens. They kiss and we move on because there's really no point to this subplot at all. Now's the part where the movie somehow gets even more dumb. She leaves to go to the bathroom, which is apparently in this rickety old barn. I never understood why she went out there to begin with. I never saw a bathroom. She's just gonna pee in private and behind like a hay bale. Are there no bathroom facilities here? What the fuck is she even doing out there? She goes out there. This is the place where she was murdered. And she's just gonna stand there and accept her death. But no, it's a trap. The killer shows up, he grabs a scythe, and he walks towards her, and her sister and Quinn come barreling down in his truck, blow through the barn, and hit him with their vehicle. This was their brilliant plan. How do they know when to stop and how not to hit Summer? She was right in front of the vehicle too. There were like a million ways they could have done this better. Uh, fortunately, it kind of worked out, except for it didn't. Because evil Quinn, yeah, it was Quinn the whole time from the future. He came back because he was bullied and because he liked Summer, but she didn't like him because she's gay. That's disgusting. So he is going to kill them all now. Fortunately, Lucy got that time machine fired back up, Richard, prior to these events, and her and the killer end up going back to the future. Dun, 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 dun. Scan, dun, that's the power of love. Dun, 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 dun. I should just watch Back to the Future. We get a riveting, and by riveting, I mean awful fight in a parking garage where Lucy has to dodge a couple knife attacks like she's in Cable Guy. She grabs an EV pump, puts it up into the air as he's slicing down on her, gets electrocuted and dies. And that's it, Lucy uh, succeeds, she saved her sister. She actually ended up getting the security guard killed, I forgot about that. <laughs> During the mall sequence, she managed to not save either of those two people that were murdered, but actually got a third security guard killed, who's never brought up again. He just, he lost his life. Probably had a wife and kids, you know, maybe, maybe a day away from retirement. Well, he retired early from life. Uh, but no, hopefully not much else changed in her world so she can go back to her family. Maybe her sister's there. She's older, obviously. She can greet her parents. Um, no, none of that happens. Instead, we go back to 2003, where Summer and Quinn are sad that Lucy's probably dead. And, oh, there's Lucy! She's back! She chose to stay in 2003 because her parents in the future don't even know she exists. That's how things changed. And so now she can be with her sister in the past. Isn't that fun? I'm not sure what she does about, like, identification, social security, any of that stuff, but she's going to apply to work at NASA. And that's something you can do as a person that has no citizenship. Where is she gonna live? Eh, question mark, who cares? She's with her sister. A sister who she wasn't sure she was gonna save. Which brings me to my favorite plot point of this entire film. Lucy has developed a rapport with Summer. She likes her, she appreciates her friendship. Summer even dressed her at one point. She gave her some modern clothes from 2003, which somehow fit her. Uh, Summer is like a full foot shorter than her sister Lucy, yet she manages to have pants that go from fucking waist down to the ankles. I don't understand it. Doesn't matter, nothing matters in this movie. They develop a bond, so it's very troubling later on when she tells Quinn she's not sure if she wants to save Summer because that means Lucy might not exist in the future. How does she know this? 
She had one conversation for four seconds with her parents from the past in which she said, hey, that summer is great. You ever think about having more kids? And the parents were like, uh, you know, I don't think so. One's probably plenty for us. We're kind of a, a one and done family. You know, the only way we're going to have another kid is if Summer dies. Then maybe, yeah, we'll mourn for quite a long time and probably pop another one out to replace the one we lost. But no, no, no. One, I think one is the lucky number for us. We're kind of a, just a, a one man, one woman kind of family. They said almost none of that. All they said was, yeah, one is probably good. Listen, people change their minds over time. There were many years where I didn't want to have an animal. I didn't want a pet in the house. Then we ended up getting a pet at one point. There were many years when I was younger and didn't want children. Now I got two of these little shitheads. Things change. You can be convinced. You might have some experiences that open your mind or change your approach to things. They have plenty of time to make that decision, but Lucy's gonna springboard off of this five second fleeting moment and go, oh my God, if I save my sister, I might not exist. What kind of shitty person are you, Lucy? You suck. And also, much like the killer looming around where you could have disposed of him a million different ways and chose not to, you're telling me there's no way for you to just tell your parents? You don't have a time frame here. You could be like, hey, listen, I'm from the future. Look at this fucking iPhone. I can tell you everything about your family and about your daughter. You need to have me in the future or none of this is going to work out and your daughter's going to die today. Or maybe if she saves Summer, she can be like, hey, sis, can you make sure your parents bang it out a couple times until they have me in the future? That would be great. I'd love to exist. There, there, there's just, there, I, I can't with this movie. It's so stupid. Oh, and also since she stopped Quinn in the future, they're now friends with the past Quinn who grows up to be a murderer, but I guess not because they stopped him and they're all like cool and friends. So he's going to be just fine now. Weird, weird plot. And also, 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 the house that her sister stays in, in 2003, is like modern. They have like shiplap on the wall. This does not look like a house from the early 2000s. Again, a small nitpick, but everything is either a large one or a small one. They're all picks. Okay, I think I've bitched enough. Bottom line is I didn't care for this film. I want to hear from you though. Did you watch this Drek? Did you think it was good? In which case, I implore you to maybe broaden your horizons and watch a few more films a year that aren't Netflix exclusives. There's much better out there, I promise you. Please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell so future videos show up in your feed. I review a ton of stuff, obviously. Would love to have you on board. It's movies all the time here. If you love what I'm doing, maybe think about supporting this one-man band on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Tons of exclusives. 300, as a matter of fact, and counting every month, different tier levels of support. It's a great way to show that you, uh, you're a fan of the show, and I would appreciate it. I also have a spring store at Adam Does Movies. There, there's ways that you can give back, and I, I would appreciate it. All right, hopefully I see you in the future. <laughs> Time joke.